our fiber friends. Uh, Sarah here. Uh, we're in the other room, not in my yarn lab, but this is a yarn lab video for you all. And it's another kind of different, not a lab report, not a spinning video. Um, today, I want to share with you a bit of a fiber arts related thrift store haul. Um, today is actually my 35th birthday and over the past couple weeks I've been treating myself to a bit of a rural small town Alberta thrift store shopping spree, picking up some goodies to add to my fiber arts um, life. So I thought I would share that all with you today as a sort of special birthday video. And if you want to help me celebrate my birthday today, you can do that by making sure you're subscribed to my channel. Uh, go ahead and like this video to sort of promote it in the YouTube algorithms world. And um, heck, it would mean a lot if you recommend me perhaps to someone else who might be a fiber arts enthusiast as well. Now let's dive in to this little thrift store fiber arts haul. And I'm gonna jump to one of my favorite goodies first. So the magical thing about living in rural Alberta is we have just thrift stores everywhere. And quite often the fiber arts goodies are woefully underpriced, which is great for me. I actually spotted this through the window of one of our thrift shops in town. And I assumed I'd be looking to spend at least $50 and it was $10, so it had to come home right away. And it is the tiniest, most adorable. Um, it doesn't have a drive band on it, but the treadle is, oops, I said it's functional, but it's not gonna spin in my hand. So the treadle is functional. It's this little castle style spinning wheel. Um, antique, I couldn't even begin to imagine uh, what the age of something like this is. Um, the bobbin and flyer come off like so and it does feel like a little bit of a good uh, greasing of the parts is all that would be needed to have this fully functional. That and a cotton thread for a drive band looks like we'd need to set it up in scotch tension um, and it actually you can adjust the tension by moving that sort of mother um, flyer assembly up and down with this tensioning knob. It's super adorable. It's fully functional, or at least I assume so. I'll do another video seeing if I can get it to spin. And I'm just floored. Floored that like this is, you know, a toy that would have been individual, each piece would have been hand turned on a lathe. Like the amount of craftsmanship that goes into making a tiny functional spinning wheel is equal to if not more than what would go into a full-size spinning wheel and this came home for $9.99. Um, super excited and like I said I'm gonna see if I can get it fully functional and then I'll have to do one of my uh, 23 spins this year spinning on this teeny tiny spinning wheel. Speaking of underpriced fiber arts equipment. Now these aren't functional, but they were only $5. And they are a pair of very antique, still with some bits of fiber in them, hand cards. Um, you can see they've got some nails poking right through to the back. Um, they're definitely handmade. Looks like they have sort of a plank of wood that has over the years split on both of them, although it was originally a full piece, with some reinforcements. Um, the carding cloth looks like it is leather, and the teeth are kind of going every which way now. But, I mean, you can imagine that you'd still potentially be able to card a little bit of wool on these. I think that they'd definitely be more of a decorative item. I've got it in my head to eventually have a wool shed somewhere on my property um, and these would make amazing decor just pulling off the price tag um, but yeah so a pair of truly vintage um, handmade wool cards that was a fun find and for five dollars how could I say no um, like I said decorative wouldn't be able to realistically use them 
but it goes to show you like you can imagine the a number of years and the amount of love and just how much wool would have likely been processed on these cards so that was a really very exciting find at the same thrift store i also picked up two sets of these wooden bag handles they were 50 cents for each pair and this um sort of more of a bamboo or reed type also 50 cents um and i'm gonna make some knitting project bags with these um that i may sell at uh, a market or on my etsy shop in the future i have a vintage hand-me-down knitting project bag i'm currently keeping my aurora cabin shawl project in it i've shared it in past videos um and they really make a great bag um, with these sort of wooden handles, you can open the top up nicely, you can carry the bag around nicely. And a new set of these handles can be quite expensive. So to find these for sale at a thrift store for just 50 cents was a super great find. Even the woman at the checkout for this set um, agreed with that. Next up, I wanted to share with you this sewing box. Um, it is missing one piece on this side, but this is probably from what the internet tells me, maybe 1940s, 1950s, um, these boxes would have normally originally have had feet and a wooden handle over the top. Those are missing from mine, but otherwise mine is in great shape. Um, it opens up and accordions out nicely. I've already taken the time and effort to fill it with all of my sewing notions, but it did come filled with a little of its own. Inside, I found some old rickrack. Uh, I've got it wrapped around a box that would have been uh, Dominion thumbtacks. That was in there. Um, some deeply problematic uh, sewing needles. There was this needle book um, that I think this kind of dates back to like 1940s, 1950s, but um, you know, which explains the like I said, deeply pro problematic imagery on the outside of the needle book, but there are some presumably original needles in here that look like they are in great condition. Um, superior quality protected against rust and they certainly are not rusted. Uh, there were some old bobbins in here. Um, there was sort of an assortment of detrius, um, some old screws and nails, um, a collection of vintage buttons, which have been moved into my button collection already. Again, uh, like some old metal bobbins that wouldn't necessarily work on my machine, but I've kept them in the box uh, just for the joy of it. But I've moved some of my quilting um, sort of plastic template rulers in here. I've got all of my additional feet for my sewing machine and backup needles for it in here. I've got hooks and eyes and safety pins, sewing needles for hand sewing, um, thimbles, some thread gloss. So I've got my box filled up and put to use already, but I was super thrilled to find this one at one of our secondhand shops in Olds. I only paid $35 for it, which is again, I think a great deal. Um, when I was carrying it out of the shop, a woman walking past me said, oh, her mother had the exact same one. I think it's a very common, uh, sewing box, these accordion wooden sewing boxes. And it smells like, I don't know, like cedar maybe? Would it have been made of cedar? I don't know enough about wood to tell you for certain what this box would have been made of. But I'm super happy that I found it. I've been looking specifically for some sort of antique um, sewing box to keep my growing collection of sewing notions in and was pleased to have found this one. This next find was also, I think, just ridiculously underpriced. Like I said, I think that fiber arts equipment is such a niche sort of field that quite often people don't know what the value might be um, of what they have. And this particular item, I am certain that in the hands of a curated quilt um, flipper would have been priced a lot more than the $20 I paid for it. But it's a vintage quilt. Um, and I will throw it on a bed so you can get a real appreciation for how big it is. 
It came with a matching pillowcase. I would guess based on the colors and the fabrics that it's vintage to maybe the 1990s. I just know that my own home that I grew up in had a lot of sort of this blue and um, dusty pink sort of coloring in the 90s. But it's got these um, great eight pointed stars. Um, it is a little worse for wear, but much loved. You can see that, I'm not sure if it's gonna show, but it has been mended um, over time. And it also currently has some rips that would need mending. Um, you'll see these kind of called cutter quilts because they're um, in enough disrepair that it wouldn't be like a museum item or, I don't know, there's a, there's a whole thing on the internet about whether or not it's okay to cut up uh, vintage quilts for craft projects or for quilt coats. Um, and I think that this one is intended, in my opinion, for like a quilt coat. But it's just amazing. Um, from where the rips are, I did spot places that it definitely looks like it was mis machine pieced. Um, since where there were openings in some of those piecing seams, it looked like an interlocking stitch that suggests to me machine stitching. But it is hand quilted. So a lot of love and work must have gone in to making this pillowcase and making this absolutely beautiful quilt um, with these large star patterns. And the other fun feature that it has is that rather than straight borders, um, the stars are placed on point and then they have um, along the border, they've actually like left the points in. So just really amazing, quite beautiful. It's only $20. Um, it smells great too. So I don't know who laundered it last or if the thrift store has sprayed something on it. Like I said, it does, you know, it's worse for wear. It certainly can't go directly onto a bed and likely that's why the, th the thrift shop priced it so low. But these are sort of the, the type of quilts that you're seeing all over social media. Um, repurposed into coats or bags or all sorts of uh, items. So it's not a project I'm ready to dive into yet, but I couldn't resist bringing it home with me. So here is that beautiful quilt spread out on a queen size bed. Um, I'll show you that detail of the points at the bottom of the, um, the piecing here along the edging which is, I think, a very fun detail. And I'll also show you what I mean about the quilt needing some TLC. Of course, when I was spreading it, I found, so we've got a tear here. Um, yeah, there's a larger tear here. So it does need some TLC. Additionally, you can see what I mean about it being machine pieced because you can tell that that's an interlocking stitch um, holding these little diamonds together but you can see that it definitely looks to be hand quilted um, just with some running stitches. So really beautiful. Uh, definitely some love and tenderness that needs to go into some repairs on it. Here's another tear, but um, we'll have to find a new life for this quilt. So next up I have a whole basket of goodies and this basket actually came with something else but I'll show you what's in the basket first. Um, there is a antique um, spool winder. So it is a Nillis LeClerc made in Canada. So there's that branding on it. And this is a spool winder. So it also came with a collection of spools. So if you're a weaver, um, you can get these little plastic spools that go inside your shuttle. And this just helps you to wind them up and fill them more quickly and evenly um, for doing more weaving. And so in this basket also came a little um, metal tub full of spools with bits of wool yarn, mainly some cotton yarn on some of them. And so these are all bobbin spools 
Um, they are also Nellis Leclerc made in Canada, so they match the winder exactly. And maybe if I ever do finally one day get my antique loom up and running, and I'll link that first video here. I know I get comments every now and again asking what the status of that loom is. Unfortunately, the status is still in my garage, but I have got bobbins now, spools, um, that could fit into a shuttle to weave from. So that was in this basket. Also in this basket was another set of antique hand cards. And these ones are actually in beautiful condition and much cleaner than the other ones as well. In fact, the carding cloth looks great. Um, they are wool house from Armstrong in British Columbia. Let me pop over onto my computer and see if we can find anything about this brand and how old these carders might be. All right, so I did do a little investigation into wool house um, in B Armstrong, BC. And what I found is that they were a uh, locally owned and operated mom and pop shop that produced handmade weaving looms um, from 1977 through to, I think about 2020-ish. Um, they've since sold um, the plans and the designs for those looms over to a company in the US. Um, and I will link uh, these two websites below. Um, so sometime between 1977 and the sort of early um, sort of 2010s, likely these hand cards were made um, right here in Canada and BC. They're in beautiful shape and they were also included in that basket. And these are totally usable. I can't see any reason not to use them. Um, they're clean. The teeth on the carding cloth looks great. Um, the leather looks like it's in great shape. So I'm gonna absolutely put these to use along with my other pair of carders. Uh, there was also a small carding um, brush. Uh, this might be handy on my drum carder or on my blending board. Um, so it was also in that basket. Now, carders like these can run you like $150. I got everything in this basket, plus the last thing I'm going to show you for only $125. And when I show you the last thing, you will really not believe that that's all I paid for hand carders, the um, spool winder and all the spools, and my newest fully functional spinning wheel. So um, this is a handmade, there's no brand information on it whatsoever. Um, it's kind of in the style of a Canadian production wheel, although the Canadian production wheels um, were often a bit bigger than this one. But it's a fully functional spinning wheel. Now, I actually had my eyes on this spinning wheel um, at this particular secondhand store in town since the summer. And I didn't buy it. Uh, and it came with that basket full of goodies too. And they would not split them up because they, from the perspective of the store owners, they go together. You could not use the spinning wheel without the carters and the accessories in the basket and vice versa. Um, cause I did offer to buy the basket full of goodies, <laughs> um, independent of the wheel. The reason I didn't originally want to buy the wheel and I will, um, see if I can get a different camera angle here. So here we go. The reason I didn't originally want to buy the wheel is because it was missing one of these upright pieces. And, um, the owners of the store knew that the woman uh, who originally owned the wheel had used it um, extensively and that it would be in working condition, except that this piece was missing. And then just before Christmas, I went into the store and there it was, they had actually found the piece. It turned up at a different secondhand shop in town. And now I have a fully functional double drive wheel. So you can see I've got two drive bands uh, one turning the flyer, one acting as sort of the brake band. 
But importantly, she spins. You can treadle and she spins. Um, let me pull the fiber through because I've just tested it out with a little bit of just mystery blue fleece that I have. Um, just some scrap, some scrap fiber, really. But she spins! So, just get this all wound onto my bobbin. Grab some fiber. And so, it's still going to take some getting used to. I've never spun on uh, sort of a double drive wheel like this before. Um, and occasionally the drive band slips out of the groove that it needs to be in for spinning. And so whether or not I need to replace that cotton drive band or shorten it a little, you know, that remains to be seen. But the point is that this is a beautiful, well-loved antique spinning wheel in fully functioning condition. Um, it only had one bobbin. And so I might need to see if I can either source some other bobbins that will fit on this wheel, or, um, I mean, certainly if I can't source wooden ones that will fit, I know that that Acreworks company that does the 3D printed bobbins, I'm certain I'd be able to source some from them that would fit this wheel. But it spins! And so it was, uh, I think I said $125 for a fully functional antique spinning wheel, as well as um, the hand carters and the spool winder. And I couldn't be more pleased. Um, it's great to have a traditional wheel. I think that as a decor piece in my home, um, I mean, my husband's happy, <laughs> happy. He, he takes a deep breath in when I come home with spinning equipment and fiber processing equipment. But he agrees that even just as an item that might sit and occupy space, this is beautiful. Um, it's been sitting up next to our fireplace upstairs, and I just I think that it's absolutely gorgeous. I know nothing about it. Like I said, there's no maker information on it. There is sort of a little design um, right here, but that doesn't give me any clues. And there is actually a signature on the inside of the bobbin but it's illegible and doesn't give me any clues as to who may have made this, how old it might be. Um, it certainly is quite old because it has very few metal parts. Um, just the sort of bit that goes through the middle of the flyer is metal. And um, even like this piece here that's holding the front of the flyer, it looks and feels like it's maybe like a piece of wood. Um, and in the back, it's a piece of leather. The very few number of nails that are on here, um, you can't really see on this angle. Let me see. I don't know if you can see. So there are a few nails down here, and they're handcrafted nails. They're not mass-produced nails. So the very small number of metal pieces look like they were purpose-made for this. Otherwise, the whole wheel is assembled just by fitting wooden pins into places um, to hold things together. But hopefully you can hear from the excitement in my voice how thrilled I am to have found this wheel um, and to share a little bit of it with you. Like I said, I'm going to have to do a full yarn spin on it um, to really put it through its paces, to get used to the drive system on it. Um, but it's in great shape and it, it's fully functional. So can you really ask for anything more than that? So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, what I think has been a wildly successful bit of fiber arts related thrifting. Um, can't believe the deals that I got on these items and I'm so happy to incorporate them into my yarn lab and into my life and to extend the life of um, fiber arts equipment that was lovingly handcrafted in the first place that was well used and loved by the people who were the original owners of them and what better way to celebrate these items than to continue putting them to well use and well loved um, 
for the rest of their future. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video a bit. Like I said, expect to see both the full-size wheel and my tiny adorable toy wheel in future yarn spinning videos. Uh, those hand carters will go to great use. That quilt will eventually be some sort of sewing project here on this channel. Um, and the sewing box will, I mean, it's already well put to use um, in my yarn lab. So that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for sticking along, hopefully to the end of this video. And don't forget to hit the subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the fun that I've got going on in my yarn lab. In the meantime, happy knitting, crocheting, spinning, sewing, quilting, whatever it is that you do, uh, happy experimenting with fiber because after all, this is the yarn lab. Bye for now.